Led Zeppelin, the band responsible for an unmistakably powerful sound that shook the world. Their songs are easily recognizable and famous for their epic rock ballads, heavy yet melodic melodies, bone-chilling vocals, and powerful drum grooves. The group features vocalist Robert Plant, drummer John Bonham, bassist John Paul Jones, and guitarist Jimmy Page. All powerhouses on their own, together they make one of the most celebrated rock bands of all time. But why? What did they do differently? Rewind to 1964, five years before Led Zeppelin's debut self-titled album, America's Homes and Cars were filled with songs from bands like The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, and The Beach Boys. Most of the rock music of this era was just evolving from rock and roll of the late 50s and was safe, approachable, and basic. Sonically, they had a round, clean sound driven by simple drum beats, jangly guitar parts, and clear vocal melodies. Performers carried a professional image and a composed and no-frill stage presence. Think of the clean-cut image of the Beatles or Beach Boys, always dressed in matching suits or uniforms. Five years later comes a group of energetic, long-haired musicians sporting skin-tight clothes with a sexualized and unapologetic stage presence. All of this accompanied by an explosive, heavy, and sometimes psychedelic sound was something the world had not seen before. Part of what made it work so well is that all four members were masters of their craft. John Bonham started drumming at age five and got his first drum kit by the time he was 15. He never took formal lessons but jumped between bands while he was an apprentice carpenter to his dad. One of these bands was blues group The Crawling King Snakes in which he met Led Zeppelin's lead singer Robert Plant. Bonham is known for his speed on the bass drum, overall power, and complex grooves. His staple in these grooves was an interesting use of triplets in which he dances around the beat, not always striking the downbeat. Here's one of my favorites of his. Here's the isolated track. And here he breaks it down even further. And one more time. He also had a tendency to mimic the rhythm of Jimmy Page's guitar part. Listen to the bass drum on this one. That brings us to Jimmy Page, the lead guitarist. Many associate Page's image with the Gibson Les Paul, a guitar favored by artists like Slash, Dwayne Allman, and Pete Townsend. Page actually used a Fender Telecaster for most of the early albums and live performances. Think of Bruce Springsteen's guitar. Page's upbringing is as a studio guitarist, basically meaning he's hired to play guitar parts for other people's records. This means playing it in one take and playing it right, or he's out of a job. During this time, he contributed to some Rolling Stones, The Who, and Beatles records. He's quoted saying, My session work was invaluable. At one point, I was playing at least three sessions a day, six days a week. And I rarely ever knew in advance what I was going to be playing. But I learned things even on my worst sessions, and believe me, I played on some horrible things. He was in a band called The Yardbirds, previously fronted by Eric Clapton before Page joined. After two members left, he took it into his own hands to create a band of his own. He recruited Robert Plant, who in turn suggested his friend John Bonham to be the drummer. He was also contacted by John Paul Jones. The original name was going to be the New Yardbirds, but got the name Led Zeppelin from a joke Keith Moon made about how he thought the band would go in the air like a lead balloon. Jimmy is responsible for characterizing most of the band's experimental elements, writing the music and recording the albums. His playing is chaotic and mesmerizing with a saturated, overdriven sound attached to it. He often strings together long and rapid guitar solos, a first for popular music at the time. A 
A softer acoustic sound was also one of his trademarks. A lot of the allure of this band for myself is Page's geniusly simple yet memorable guitar riffs that I look to for inspiration as a guitarist. Underneath the guitar is an incredibly solid bassist and creator of many memorable bass lines, John Paul Jones. Like Page, he was a session musician, and the two often crossed paths during their work. He jumped between a few bands and eventually contacted Page and asked him to put him in any of his future projects. He was known as being the most reserved of the group and doesn't get as much credit as the other members. What many don't know is that Jones is an excellent multi-instrumentalist and was responsible for recording most of the other instruments on records, like the organ on Misty Mountain Hop and the recorder on Stairway to Heaven. He also played the mandolin, lap guitar, and cello, to name a few. Part of what gave the guitar a thicker sound was Jones playing the same thing as Page, which he did quite often. Robert Plant has the voice and lyrics that makes their music mysterious, spiritual, and provocative. He has an incredible vocal range and is known for his high-pitched singing. Plant's lyrics are usually in one of two realms. They're either full of sexual innuendo like those of Black Dog, or rooted in fantasy and classical mythology like Over the Hills and Far Away and the Battle of Evermore. Plant is a big fan of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and referenced some events from the books in his lyrics. Plant's strong vocals along with his flamboyant demeanor and stage presence made him a rock idol and would be modeled by many bands to follow. In fact, Led Zeppelin inspired countless musical groups because they effectively created the genre of hard rock. Many metal and rock bands of the 80s would model their sound after Led Zeppelin like Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith, and Metallica to name a few. They created a new wave of music that would lead to punk rock and grunge, but are most noted for their influence on metal. The band was active for 12 years and became the second best-selling band in the U.S. at over 100 million records sold. They produced nine studio albums, six of which reached number one on Billboard's album chart. Rolling Stone deemed them unquestionably one of the most enduring rock bands in history, and they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1995. Unfortunately, their amazing run came to a halt when John Bonham passed away after a night of heavy drinking at the age of only 32. The world lost an amazing artist, but his legacy was more than already established in the hearts and minds of his fans and followers. Led Zeppelin is still a modern marvel and created music that will continue to evoke feelings of good times, of bad times, and will live on forever in rock history. I would still be loving you When mountains crumble to the sea